South Florida's news leader. This is NBC6, today in South Florida. I'm not uh, like the perfect guy. No, it's okay, I apologize. I love you anyway. Oh, okay, we're on. All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Middle of the week, Wednesday, January 31st. Oh, it's the last day of January. Can you believe it? Just flew wow. by. 2007. And you are Bob Mayer. I am indeed. And I'm Pam Giganti. Thanks for joining us. Time to get you updated right now with a quick check of our top stories today in South Florida. Can it be the Cuban government releases what it claims is new video of Fidel Castro showing him looking stronger, a little heavier, and talking again with Hugo Chavez? They're the first images of the Cuban leader in months, and this time his jacket does not have the name F. Castro emblazoned <laughs> on the left side. More coming up in a live report. A sad story after a man returns home from work and accidentally runs down his son's playmate while pulling into his driveway. Ninth graders across Florida will be choosing high school majors this fall, as mandated last year by the state legislature. Senator Barack Obama has introduced a bill to pull U.S. forces out of Iraq by the spring of 2008. In the meantime, a new audit shows tens of millions of dollars meant for Iraqi construction. Reconstruction has been wasted. After a two-day jaunt in the Midwest, President Bush heads to Wall Street today to speak about taxes and interest rates as part of his State of the Economy address. It is 4.59, and this is Today in South Florida. Time for us to take a look at the weather once again. A little bit of a cool start, 53 degrees outside right now. Let's get you on over to meteorologist Ryan Phillips for more. One more cool day, huh, Ryan? Yeah, that's right. Uh, we are still in the, we will still end up below average today, Bob and Pam, but it's still a refreshing start. Not as chilly as it was yesterday morning, but still another chance for you to have a jacket, have a sweater before you head out the door this morning. Overnight, we had just a few showers, believe it or not. Live Weather Plus Doppler radar, the showers out of here. What happened was the atmosphere cooled down real fast, and we uh, were able to squeeze just a few sprinkles, a few showers out of it. But uh, the rain showers out of here, just a few returns down there across the uh, Florida Straits. That's about it. Here's a 12-hour review. Looks rather impressive on the weather computer, but what happened was the air is so dry, all of this that showed up, most of it did not reach the ground. Most of it evaporated before it could, could get down to the surface. But still some leftover clouds out there, but uh, they too are thinning out. We've got a much better day. The high overcast from yesterday moving off to the east. Temperature's not as cool this morning. 58 in Miami, 65 down in Key West. We'll be right around 57 this morning. We'll get those high-level clouds out of here. Mostly sunny and 74 for your midweek forecast, the last day of January. But February starting off on a very warm note. We'll talk more about that in just a few moments. Right now, a check on the morning roads with Karen Curtis. Hey, Karen. Hello there. Well, we can hear the crickets. It's so quiet out on the roadways, Ryan. It's a good commute. Look at one car southbound right there, two, three. Uh, as you're heading into downtown, 12 minutes from the Golden Glades to the Dolphin Expressway. Speaking of which, there is the 836, the East-West Expressway off the Turnpike, all the way over to I-95. Just a 15-minute ride for you there. And in Broward County, I-95 from Hillsboro Boulevard on down to 595, 15 minutes as well. No major accidents to report in the Broward area on I-75, 595, the Sawgrass Turnpike, 95 for that matter. That's the latest traffic and weather together. Now, your news. Karen, thank you. New images of Fidel Castro once again of South Florida and the world talking but are they really new? The new video appeared on Cuban television last night. Tisha Lewis joins us live right now from Little Havana with more. Good morning, Tisha. Good morning, Pam. And that will likely be the question once traffic picks up here at the Versailles restaurant in Little Havana. Is this video authentic? Now, these are the first images we are seeing of Fidel Castro in three months. And while he appears heavier and stronger, some are still skeptical. The video was released by Cuban state-run television. It shows an apparent Monday morning meeting with Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez. 80-year-old Castro is sporting a red, white, and blue tracksuit standing, looking alert. At one point, he and Chavez point to a news article dated January 27th. But some have doubts. You can have any kind of paper held in the hand. You could even print a paper and then release it later. You can even insert the paper via Photoshop. Now, Castro's medical condition for a long time has been top secret, and the Cuban government denies that he suffers from terminal cancer. Now, this latest video disputes an earlier report in El País that described the ailing leader's condition as grave.
We're live in Little Havana. Tisha Lewis, NBC6. Tisha, thank you. And for all the latest information on Fidel Castro and his health, log on to our website, NBC6.net. Click on News for our special section, Fidel Castro, His Life and Times. There you'll also find a slideshow of the latest photos of the Cuban leader. It's all at your one source, NBC6.net. The city of Miami is denying recent media reports suggesting that it is planning a celebration after Fidel Castro dies. City officials say the Orange Bowl has been designated by city and county leaders as a possible site for people and community leaders to gather peacefully if necessary. They also say no tax dollars will be spent on the event should it occur. Tragedy strikes in Pembroke Pines when a seven-year-old girl is run over by her friend's father. It happened in the 9300 block of Northwest 23rd Street late yesterday. Police say 40-year-old Mark Presno came home from work, pulled into his driveway, and never saw little Amanda when he accidentally ran her down. Police say Presno's son was also standing near the driveway when all this happened, but he was not hurt. The Presnos, who have three kids of their own, were apparently taking care of the little girl when all of this happened. Pam? 5.04 is the time. A man is in stable condition this morning after he is shot by police in North Miami. It happened yesterday outside a home on Northeast 16th Avenue and 154th Street. Officers say they were forced to fire after the man refused orders to drop his gun. Police also say the man in his 20s appeared to be suicidal. An investigation is underway into the fatal shooting of a sheriff's deputy's wife. It happened yesterday in Mariana, a town just northwest of Tallahassee. Police say Melly McDaniel, the wife of Jackson County Sheriff Johnny McDaniel, was shot and killed right outside their home. The first officer to arrive on the scene was also killed by attackers. And then minutes later, the two attackers were killed by officers. Time now is 5.04. Property tax relief may soon be reality for homeowners and businesses across our state. Governor Chris yesterday proposing a $2 billion property tax break for homeowners, landlords, and businesses. Under the proposal, the dollars saved would come from the budgets of local governments and school districts. The savings estimated to increase to $4.7 billion annually in about five years. Well, today the day for all school districts in the state to turn in a final list of what high schools will offer what majors. As part of former Governor Jeb Bush's A++ plan, the state will require every student entering high school this fall to pick a major area of interest. Middle school students entering the ninth grade will have to choose from an average of like 130 different majors. Becoming a U.S. citizen may soon require not only lots of study, but a lot of cash. Officials say the Bush administration will propose nearly doubling the fee it charges applicants for U.S. citizenship. An administration official says the current fee of $330 to apply would rise to slightly less than $600. Fee increases are also possible for green cards, fingerprinting, and work permits. A key terror charge is being reinstated against an accused al-Qaeda operative. A Miami federal appeals court has agreed with prosecutors to restore the charge against Jose Padilla. They argue that charging him with conspiracy to murder, kidnap, and maim people overseas does not duplicate other counts. It's the only count that could bring a life sentence. Padilla was originally arrested on suspicion of plotting a dirty bomb attack in the United States. Senator Barack Obama says U.S. forces, combat forces, need to be out of Iraq by spring 08. The Democratic presidential hopeful says he's taking President Bush up on his challenge for Iraq policy critics to offer alternatives. More now from Brooke Hart in Washington. Think that... Today, two former top diplomats testify on Iraq, Henry Kissinger and Madeleine Albright, both former secretaries of state. While more U.S. troops clamp down on Baghdad, war critics in the Senate warn of what's missing. It is all military. It is all surge. There's training. But, but where is the, the, the diplomatic focus and effort? The Iraq Study Group's co-chairs told senators the panel did not rule out more troops. It could support a short-term redeployment or surge of American combat forces to stabilize Baghdad. As long as there's more, they said. Above all, a concerted effort to train Iraqis despite the U.S. buildup. You want to get out of Iraq, the best way, most feasible way to get out of Iraq is to train those forces. In another room, emotions ran high among war protesters as Senate Democrats raised threats anew to cut off funds for the war. We have heard convincing testimony and analysis that Congress has the power to stop a war if it wants to. The president... 
The senator from Illinois is recognized. But many Democrats support other limits. Democratic presidential hopeful Barack Obama introduced his Iraq plan. The days of our open-ended commitment must come to a close. Proposing troops be out of Iraq by March of next year. One bit of agreement between congressional leaders and the White House to follow on the president's proposal to form a joint working group on Iraq. The group's first meeting is expected next week. In Washington, Brooke Hart, NBC6. Well, do you think our economy is doing well? President Bush will try to convince us today in a speech at Federal Hall in New York. The president expected to talk about how tax cuts, low interest rates, and low inflation have helped keep the economy booming. White House Press Secretary Tony Snow says the president is focusing on the economy because many Americans don't know how robust it really is. Delaware Democratic U.S. Senator Joe Biden will try again. He's decided to make another run for the presidency. Biden was forced out of the Democratic race back in 1988 when it was revealed parts of a campaign speech he had given had been plagiarized from a speech given by a British Labor Party member. Now, Biden's decided to skip the exploratory committee route and refile his papers directly. He also said there on Meet the Press, as you see him appearing, that despite the crowded field already of Democratic candidates, including Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, he's just going to be Joe room, Biden. Room for one more, I guess. Yeah, huh? exactly. Always room for someone else. Nine past the hour, 5.09. Much more ahead on Today in South Florida. More legal troubles for R&B singer Brandy. It has happened again. A woman strikes it rich at a casino, but they say it's all a mistake. Plus, one lucky South Florida student isn't spending his day at school, but amongst the most watched athletes in the world. We'll be back. You're watching NBC6 Today in South Florida with Bob Mayer, Pam Giganti, and NBC6 Weather Plus with meteorologist Brian Phillips. Thursday, a Today exclusive, Miss USA. Thank God I have the chance to make it right. Tara Connor talks to Matt candidly about her addiction and how she hopes her struggle could help others. Live in our studio on Today, only on NBC. Closed captioning on NBC6 is brought to you by Palmetto Ford. Weekend warriors, big families looking for a new extended expedition? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. 305-592-FORD. And now, meteorologist Brian Phillips with NBC6 Weather Plus. It is 513, last day of January. Look twice at your calendars. We're getting ready to go into February, and with February will come some warmer temperatures. We'll talk about that here over the course of the next few minutes. During the overnight hours, either you heard the rain or you were out and about and you saw the rain. Some uh, brief showers moving through the area uh, late last evening and through the overnight hours. So that would explain the raindrops on your windshields this morning. But uh, off to our south, that's where the showers are. Very light moving off to the east. We are dry to start off our Wednesday morning. Weather plus tight and radar sweeping clear across the area. Just a few clouds in the mix. And that is about it. When you step outside on the cool side, but certainly not as chilly as it was yesterday morning. We started off yesterday in the lower 50s. This morning, mid to upper 50s, just a few leftover clouds in our skies on our Wednesday morning and then up to about 74 this afternoon. Now, 74 degrees, still about three degrees below the average, but a lot more sunshine around today, so that'll be fairly nice. We'll call for mostly sunny skies and then a lot warmer this evening, 68. It's a lot better than maybe lower to lower 60s to maybe upper 50s like we've seen for the last few evenings. Winds right now out of the northwest at about five to 10 miles an hour. No big deal there, but northwest winds will shift to the north then to the northeast, then to the east. So some warming winds uh, coming our way. We'll show you that in just a second. Here are your current temps, 57 in Fort Lauderdale, 58 in Miami. Temperatures pretty much will be level at this point for the rest of the morning. 54 in Kendall, 55 in Opelika, 57 in Homestead. Kendall yesterday in the lower 40s, so to be at 54 this morning is quite an improvement. 65 in Marathon, 65 in Key West. Again, across the state, not as chilly. 20s up uh, towards Tallahassee and Gainesville yesterday, this morning. Mid-40s, so improvements all the way around, and the cloud deck starting to break up. You can see some uh, pockets here clearing over towards the Florida West Coast, and just a few patchy clouds that are moving off to the east here through the South Florida area. So things looking better. But again, the rain looked pretty ominous on the radar picture for the last 12 hours, but the lower levels, the atmosphere just so dry, a lot of that evaporated as it was trying to come on down, but a few drops made it. And again, that's why we had a few wet windshields out there uh, last night and left over this morning. So the showers contained to our south, clearing trend across the eastern Gulf of Mexico, water vapor imagery confirming that. So that dry air comes in, we end up with a very nice day. And from this point forward, we begin the warming trend. As I said, the wind shifting 
in our favor right now. We've got a nice land breeze, a northwesterly wind, but as high pressure builds off to our north, winds turn over the Atlantic waters out of the northeast and will gradually moderate the temperatures warmer through the afternoon hours and, of course, not as cool through the overnight with the winds coming in, coming in off of the Atlantic. So more sunshine for your day. Highs in the mid 70s, a great looking forecast. We're going to call it 74 north winds initially shifting to the northeast at around 10 miles an hour. Get into the overnight hours tonight. We're in the 50s this morning. Tomorrow will be in the lower 60s. Then sunny but breezy for your Thursday. Highs up to 80. That warm and humid, you will not believe that it's uh, still winter come Friday and, it's, and into Saturday, but we still have the shower chances to last throughout Super Bowl weekend. That's your weather. Here's the traffic with Karen Curtis. Thank you so much there, Ryan. South Bend 95, again, still very good. If you're heading out of the house, pop that heater on. I did, and put us on your car radio, 87.7 FM. People in town from, like, Chicago and from Indianapolis are like, what is she talking about? This is warm. Anyway, uh, it's a good ride for you all the way into downtown, even on the causeways as you're heading in and off of Miami Beach. There's the MacArthur. No major accidents for you on the Julia Tuttle as well. Over into Broward County, I-95. A little busy there in between Sunrise and Atlantic Boulevards in both directions. Also eastbound of 590 filling in in spots from Flamingo to the Turnpike with construction at Pine Island and University. That's the latest traffic and weather together. Now back to you. And we are following breaking news coming into the NBC6 newsroom. Uh, this is Northwest Miami. Uh, we're told that city police, Miami City Police, are working on a possible assault. Uh, you're looking in an area in the 400 block of Northwest 7th Street. Now, we don't know right now what kind of assault this was. Police uh, have told us to set up a perimeter with K-9 units on this that street between 4th Avenue and Northwest 5th Street. Police say they're looking for a black man about six feet tall, uh, apparently wearing jeans and a white shirt. And you'll have more details as soon as we have them. An update now on a story from Wisconsin where a TV news live truck has been making news instead of covering it. An industrial sized crane was brought out yesterday to pluck the vehicle out of a hole in the ice. The TV news van had been stuck there since Sunday when the driver mistakenly drove over an ice-covered channel instead of a road. An ice-covered channel? <laughs> Get it? Channel. Oh. Hey, four people <laughs> die after a horrible explosion at levels a gas station in West Virginia. A firefighter and a paramedic were among those killed yesterday. Authorities say they got reports of a gas leak from an above-ground tank. Witnesses say the firefighters had just arrived and then the fumes somehow ignited. At least five other people were injured. 53 degrees now at 518. Singer actress Brandy facing a $50 million lawsuit this morning. She's being sued by the family of a woman killed in a four car crash, an accident Brandy admits to causing back in December. The wrongful death suit comes just a day after police recommended that prosecutors charge the 27 year old with vehicular manslaughter. Well, another story this morning about a casino that won't pay off on a slot machine win. Just like the case in South Florida last year and one last week, an Oklahoma woman won more than a million dollars at a slot machine, but the casino says the win was caused by a glitch in the machine. Diana Smith says she was ecstatic, as you might imagine, at hitting the jackpot, but when the casino manager came over and told her it was all a mistake, she was heartbroken. All machines, including American Gaming System machines, uh, indicate malfunction, voids all jackpots and pays, uh, as does these machine uh, in our casino and also every casino in the world, and every, uh, it, it, they void all jackpots. Uh, unfortunately, this was one of those few cases. Well, the casino is offering Diana $6,500 for her troubles, but she says no way, and she's demanding to see the official malfunction report on the slot machine she played on. Well, the man who brought us I Dream of Jeannie and wrote best-selling novels like The Other Side of Midnight is dead this morning. Sidney Sheldon passed away yesterday in California of complications from pneumonia. During his career, Sheldon produced television shows and wrote award-winning Broadway plays on Hollywood film scripts. At age 50, he turned to novel writing. Sidney Sheldon was 89 years old. One of the best TV theme songs ever, I Dream of Jeannie. Oh, yeah. Goes around in your head. You can't get it out sometimes. Second only to The Price is Right. Right. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Much more ahead on today in South Florida. One South Florida teen is finding himself standing among football's best, even though he can barely see over their, sho their soldiers. No, their shoulders. And you can watch us while you're at work on the web. Catch the NBC6 Newsnet at noon, streaming live here on NBC6. Dot net.
ABC6 Weather Plus Doppler Radar is brought to you by the Miccosukee Tribe of Indians of Florida. Well, the anticipation is riveting as the countdown to Super Bowl 41 draws near to a close. Journalists from across the globe flocked to Dolphin Stadium for the annual Super Bowl Media Day. And yesterday's event really wasn't just about the players, but the media itself, with thousands of reporters coming from far and wide to cover the Super Bowl. Journalists from as far away as England and Japan are in town for the big game. And probably only one of the thousands of reporters at Media Day had homework to do last night. 13-year-old South Florida boy, the youngest member of the Super Bowl media contingent, Ari Odzer. No, he's not the boy. He's our reporter who covered this. <laughs> we make up for the other. There's Peyton Manning, surrounded by a horde of reporters and photographers, and squeezed in there among the professionals is one lucky seventh grader from South Miami. It's basically realizing my dream right now so far. Bernardo Pla is a kid, and this is his candy store, access to all the players as he reports for a kid's magazine called The Weekly Reader. The best thing about being here is you know, this is something that I've always, that I've dreamed of as a little kid, you know, actually coming to a Super Bowl game. But I never thought I could actually be here, you know, working and reporting and actually meeting all these great guys. Weekly Reader tapped two local teenagers to cover the game and all the Super Bowl events. Bernardo gets Media Day and the game itself. It's football is something kids are very interested in. The Super Bowl is the game. So, so, you know, it's great to have a kid reporter out here so that the kids have a peer to listen to. They don't want to hear from us adults. They want to hear from somebody their own age what it's like. We, I'm going to write more about my experience than about what the, the answers that the players have given. He's learning the first rule of sports reporting. Give your readers what they want. Ari Odzer, NBC6. What a great day for that young man. Well, NBC6.net is preparing you for the big game. Log on and click on Super Bowl 41 in the news resources box. Find out how you can win a Super Bowl helmet all at NBC6.net. 26 past 5. This is Today in South Florida. Still ahead, they are number one in football and basketball, and now the University of Florida is number one in something else. South Florida's news leader. This is NBC6 Today in South Florida. Family and friends in shock this morning after a little girl is killed while playing in a friend's driveway. Police are turning to a couple of popular internet sites hoping to help solve a six-year-old murder case. Harry Potter is revealing what's underneath Whoa. this wizard robe. Hello. Hogwarts and all. Man. <laughs> We really mean the actor who played Harry Potter, Daniel yes. Radcliffe. Because when I first heard that, I thought, oh, like there's something sort of, you know. No, it's what you'd expect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I thought it was something about actually Harry Potter, like in a no, new book. But no. no, it's about Daniel Radcliffe. Yes. He's but posing anyway. nude. Yes, But not he in is. the movie. No, it has nothing really to do with Harry Potter. Nothing it's about all. another right. play he's in, but they're right. quite revealing. <laughs> this is Today in South Florida. It's a Wednesday morning, January the 31st, 2007. Uh, good morning, everybody. It is 5.30. I'm Pam Giganti. Bob I'm Bob Mayer. Mayer. Let's get on over to meteorologist Ryan Phillips <laughs> to look laughing. at our weather. <laughs> yeah, we were a little bit stumped. Man, yeah. you see those photos and it's like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What in the world? He's just showing off his pecs, that's all. Apparently so. Yeah. And the horse. <laughs> and the horse. <laughs> How are you this morning, South Florida? A warming trend underway. We actually had some showers move through during the overnight hours, really not adding up to all that much. Still a little bit to show you on radar this morning, but uh, nothing that will move across the South Florida area. Everything's in our offshore waters down across the Florida Straits. Most of this across the peninsula is Virga. That is the atmosphere dry. These showers show up on the radar, but they are not reaching the surface. So no concerns there. Don't worry about that. The clouds, that's what we will worry about. Satellite perspective here in the last 12 hours. Had a high overcast across the area yesterday. Some peaks of sunshine. We're in for a whole lot more sunshine on our Wednesday. 58 currently in Miami, so not as cool this morning. 65 in Key West, 49 in Fort Myers. We will be into the lower to mid-70s all across the state today, or at least the southern peninsula. Yesterday, a lot of us struggled to get to the 70-degree mark. Not as cool this morning, up through the 50s, 74, but mostly sunny skies. A very pleasant forecast for midweek up into the 80s tomorrow. We'll talk about that in just a second. Right now, check in the morning commute with Karen Curtis. Karen? Yes. How are you? I'm good. Clothes are on? Oh, yeah. No. Okay. 
Well, it's just these. <laughs> everyone's jumping on this bandwagon. I'm just confused. <laughs> I got out of bed. The clothes are on. Everything's good. Okay. Yes, we're ready to go. Let's hit the road. Let's hit the bricks. And uh, no problems. Nothing in your way. If you are heading out of the house right now, it is extremely quiet. Now that I've said that, the bottom will drop out. But for now, no major accidents in Broward County per FHP. So we can talk a little construction. Broward Boulevard between University Drive and 42nd Avenue. Some maintenance going on there. Also on 95 out of the Golden Glades into downtown from our DOT camera. Southbound still 12 to 15 minutes all the way down to the Dolphin Expressway as well as on the Dolphin Eastbound. A little more volume there off the Florida Turnpike all the way past the airport and on the Palmetto construction in between Okeechobee Road and Coral Way in both directions. That's the latest traffic and weather together. Now your news. And here's a quick check of your top stories today in South Florida. We're working a breaking story out of the city of Miami where officers are working what appears to be an assault. It's all happening in the 400 block of Northwest 7th Street. Police have set up a perimeter with K-9 units right there between 4th Avenue and 5th Avenue. New images or supposed new images of Fidel, Fidel Castro on Cuban television last night. These are the first new video of the ailing Cuban leader in nearly three months. He's seen meeting again with Venezuela's Hugo Chavez. Castro's medical condition is a state secret. But Cuban authorities are denying now that he's suffering from terminal cancer, as uh, U.S. intelligence officials have been saying. Today's the deadline for all school districts in the state to turn in a final list of what high schools will offer what majors as part of former Governor Jeb Bush's A++ plan. The state will require every student entering high school this fall to pick a major area of interest. Well, do you think our economy is doing well? President Bush is going to try to convince us today in a speech at Federal Hall in New York. The president expected to talk about how tax cuts, low interest rates, and low inflation have helped keep our economy booming. White House Press Secretary Tony Snow says the president is focusing on the economy because many Americans don't know how robust it is. A South Florida family in mourning after their little girl is killed in a tragic accident in a friend's driveway. Here's Sharon Lawson now with the story. It was in Miami. We just coming down. A mother and father visibly shaken. Have you, you spoken to him? Huh? No, they, he's crying, they, crying. <laughs> After learning their son, police say, is responsible for the tragic death of a family friend, a seven-year-old girl. He is very, very distraught, understandably. And um, again, he had a hard time speaking to us just now. This was the scene Tuesday evening in the 9000 block of Northwest 23rd Street in Pembroke Pines. Police say 40-year-old Mark Presno was returning home from work. But as he was turning into his driveway, the unexpected took place. From what he has told us so far is he heard a noise and felt the bump, at which time he stopped the truck, got out and observed the, uh, the white female lying partially underneath the truck. One of them came out after and seen her on the, on the ground. George Santiago says his nieces were with the seven-year-old, Amanda Wen, at the time of the horrible accident. How are your nieces doing at the scene? Oh, they're, they're destroyed. A scooter underneath this white Ford pickup truck, signs of the horrible tale, as detectives gather evidence at the scene and removed a vehicle to investigate how it all unfolded. Meanwhile, neighbors can't imagine the pain Presno and the young girl's family must be going through. It's terrible for Mark, ter ter terrible for the little girl, her family, her parents. I, mean, I just feel it makes me sick. It could have been me getting home from work, tired, you know, and it's just a, a terrible tragedy. Authorities say Mark Presno's son was good friends with Amanda. They actually grew up together and they were playing at the time of the accident. As it stands right now, authorities are continuing to investigate. No charges have been filed. They say that Presno is extremely distraught, so they're going to wait a couple of days before they come out here and speak with him again. Reporting from Pembroke Pine, Sharon Lawson, NBC6. Thank you, Sharon. Miami police need your help finding a bank robber. A man robbed the Northern Trust Bank in the 700 block of Brickell Avenue yesterday at about 4 o'clock. Police say after taking the bag of money from the teller, the thief walked out of the bank, headed westbound on Southwest 7th Street. And you can guess what happened. Yeah, there was a dye pack in that bag and it blew up. If you know anything about this robbery, please call Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers 305 471 tips. Aventura police are using two popular websites to try and revive a six year old murder investigation. Irving Sitcher was killed outside his condo in July of 2001. Now his murder remains unsolved, but police hope to change that by posting surveillance video of Sitcher on YouTube and MySpace. Sitcher is seen at a Publix on the night of the murder with a man who police have not been able to identify and who they describe as a person of interest. 
Well, the family of a murdered death row inmate will be holding a news conference today. Frank Valdez, brutally beaten to death by several correction officers while serving time on death row. Valdez's attorney says the state of Florida spent millions fighting the family, only to award them a $700,000 settlement later. The family plans to discuss it all today. A Broward jury convicts a man charged with kidnapping a homestead woman and keeping her as a prisoner for a week back in 04. 36-year-old Sean Dupree of Sunrise was convicted of armed kidnapping, assault, and battery for the kidnapping of Erica Washington, who he met on a telephone chat line. During testimony, Washington described how she was beaten, bound with duct tape, and drugged. NBC6 has learned that Arizona GOP U.S. Senator John McCain has hired a local political consulting firm to focus on the Hispanic vote here in the Sunshine State. The firm, called Capital Gains, will be advising McCain's exploratory committee on reaching out to local leaders while the senator considers a run for the White House. The state legislature is proposing a law that would require restaurants to tell customers when they sell them foods containing trans fats. New York City has banned trans fats altogether. They're labeled as partially hydrogenated vegetable oil. Los Angeles County is considering a ban as well. Starbucks says it'll phase out use by the end of the year. And a host of popular fast food restaurants are going healthier as well. Already number one in basketball and football, the University of Florida now leads the state in the sales of specialty license plates. Figures from Florida's Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles show that the state sold or renewed more than 90,000 UF tags in 2006, edging out the now number two ranked Protect the Panther tag that sold 87,000. 538 is the time, and we're coming right back with more right here on Today in South Florida. With the end of Harry Potter coming soon, it looks like Daniel Radcliffe is turning to uh, a more, uh, shall we say, adult type role. And coming up in sports, both the Heat and Panthers in action. We'll have those highlights coming up next in sports. And good morning to you on this Wednesday morning. Time for your bus stop forecast. Let's get it going, kids. Time to go to school, yeah. As we look at your bus stop forecast on this Wednesday, January 31st, we are winding out the month. Chilly morning to start, but a nice day, high of 74 degrees, so looking good out there. And as we take you over to the South Miami Middle School in South Miami, we're going to see a temperature of about 65 at 7 a.m. by 11 a.m., getting up to about 71, 74 by 3 p.m. Northeast wind, so we'll see a mix of sun and clouds with more sun than clouds. Great looking day. Winds will pick up in the afternoon to about northeast at 15 while you're headed home from school. Get your live online forecast 24-7 on NBC6.net. You're watching NBC6 Today in South Florida with Bob Mayer. Pam Giganti, and NBC6 Weather Plus with meteorologist Brian Phillips. Thursday. Mega superstar Jennifer Lopez. It's been on TMZ Extra. I'll bring you the original interview everyone's been talking about. I sit down with J-Lo where she tells all. She has a great feeling. Thursday on NBC6. And now, meteorologist Brian Phillips with NBC6 Weather Plus. What a beautiful start to our day on the cool side, so you can still exercise the uh, winter wardrobe. But a lot of sunshine expected this afternoon and a very pleasant forecast for the last day of January. The time just flies. Weather Plus tight and radar this morning. Clear and dry. Just a few clouds in the mix this morning. We had a few showers go through during the uh, late evening, overnight hours, and... Uh, Really didn't add up to all that much. Most of it evaporated on the way down. Still have some showers showing up on the radar picture across the Florida Straits. But uh, those will stay out there. And we're looking for nothing but sunshine and a nice warm-up. Let's take you in across Broward County for your local forecast today. Temperatures climbing up through the 70s. 74 Oakland Park, 75 Lauderdale Lake, 75 in Coconut Creek, 74 in Deerfield Beach. We'll see a few clouds this morning, then some sunshine, then a few more clouds this afternoon. But all in all, not too bad. A little bit below average, but uh, not bad at all. Our temperatures this morning are slightly below average as well. Fort Lauderdale at 57, 58 in Miami, 54 Kendall as well as Miccosukee where we started off. It was, that was the early trigger. Yeah, Pam, Pam, I, I, I didn't think I deserved a buzz. I'm buzzing the weather. Wow. Watch out. Ryan, watch out. Hey, by the way, this yeah. morning I came in, my weather office was blocked off. The oh. table pulled in front of the door. There's a sign that said your computers are down. You're going to have to work out of the Telemundo office this morning, which is yeah. our sister station here. 
And you I right. had John Gerard and Paul Diano pegged. Just playing a little trick on me. You know who it was? Mr. Mayor. Yeah. I did not know he was such a trickster. He is indeed. So be careful. I know. He And he said, you got to watch out for me. It, he's right. Little, I didn't know. Mr. Yeah, I, Innocent Bob. Right. Trying to pull hey. some fast ones. So, Bob, I'm watching you. <laughs> Satellite perspective this morning. All these mid-level clouds, high-level clouds that were in the way of our sunshine yesterday finally pulling off to the east. Now, that deserves a buzz. But uh, as we get into the uh, afternoon hours today, atmosphere really dries out, and that's where we bring in some more sunshine as well. So things only improving at this point forward. Again, the rain showers that, that were showing up, most of those were not reaching the ground, and a lot of this not actually reaching the surface here across the Florida Straits. But the bottom line is, the atmosphere stabilizing in an improving weather pattern. I want to show you something here across the southeastern states. Notice we're still very, very frigid up here from, oh, St. Louis down to Nashville in the teens there, 25 in Atlanta, then down to Gainesville at 45. We've got a pretty good surge of some uh, southerly warmth coming up across the Gulf Coast states and the Florida Peninsula. So even though just now to our north, it's very cold, we will be on the warm side of things with a developing system here. But the clouds thinning out, the dry air coming in, water vapor imagery showing that very well. So for today, High pressure way off to the north is a cold dome of high pressure, but it shifts the winds in our favor out across the Atlantic waters, which is a moderating type of wind for us. So we end up with a fair amount of sunshine through the afternoon hours and mid 70s. But up the road, still that contrast in temperatures, developing system with the uh, good southerly flow, we end up with quite a bit of rain perhaps Thursday into Friday, but we'll be on the warm side of things as we finally get back to the 80s, which we've been waiting on, and of course everyone visiting waiting on that as well. 74 today, 80 tomorrow, but breezy, 83 warm and humid on Friday, then a chance for some showers through Super Bowl weekend. That's your forecast, now check on the morning ride with... Karen Curtis. Good morning to you and a new accident to report near the Dolphin Expressway. It's at Galloway and Southwest 56th Street. So that's Miller. It's just to the south of it. That's a very busy intersection. In the meantime, the Dolphin eastbound off the Florida Turnpike does fill in from 107th Avenue all the way over to past the Red Road Curve. Over into the downtown camera. Whoops, that's a Palmetto. Uh, as you're traveling on the MacArthur Causeway or in the Julia Tuttle, the William Lehman, Sunny Isles, uh, no problem there. It's a very lightly traveled ride in and off of Miami Beach at this hour. Broward County, no major accidents reported. At this time, just a broken down vehicle, 95 southbound at Southwest 10th Street. That's the latest traffic and weather together. Now time for the morning buzz. Oh, and it buzz was. Oh, there it is. There it is. Now working. Okay. It's in and out. Short circuit must be, huh? Topping the morning buzz, Harry Potter is about to pull off his, well, let's say his most stunning trick yet. Indeed. Making his pants disappear. His clothes altogether. Daniel Radcliffe, who played Harry Potter in the movies, is set to appear nude, naked, in the buff, sans clothes, next month in a London play called Equus. <laughs> to promote it, he's been posing for some pretty uh, risque pictures. Yes, indeed. Yeah. We see. Without his shirt, without, without anything on. Lord uh, Voldemort, be very afraid. But we thought it was a bit too early to show all of Radcliffe's <clears throat> revealing photos, but you can check them all out. See, we're going to let you do it. <laughs> Just log on to NBC6.net. Point and click on our entertainment section, and you can also find a link to the theater website. Yes. Well, People Magazine reports that Isaiah Washington is scheduled to return to the Grey's Anatomy set as early as tomorrow. According to the magazine, Washington has confirmed he'll arrive for his next call time, though, you know, the show's production schedule does change from time to time. Now, Washington has been at the center of controversy since using a slur to refer to co-star T.R. Knight, who is gay. Jake Gyllenhaal's career has been pretty amazing for sure. And now the dreamy eyed actor is talking to GQ magazine about real life like getting married and having kids. But not so fast. The actor is holding out, he says, until the right woman comes along, of course. Jake says the most important job for any man is finding the right woman. Wow. It's complicated, and if you have it, you hold on to it, and it's full of obstacles. That's how the 26-year-old feels about love, and uh, we're sure there's plenty of ladies out there who wouldn't mind being with Jake. Yes, indeed. Well, in case you missed last night on The Tonight Show, Jay gave his thoughts on settling down and spending more time with family. Red Sox pitcher Kurt Schilling, who said he was going to retire after his last season and spend more time with his family, he's going to retire and spend more time with his family, announced he will not retire after all. Apparently, after spending time with his family, he realized, this sucks. I'm going back to... <laughs> It's hard sometimes to stay home with the kids yeah. all day. You need a break now and then, right? Yes, it's difficult. Sometimes Who's, it's easier to go to work. Because being with me is easy. 
Yeah, well, because you listen. My kids don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to catch Jay tonight when he welcomes Forrest Whitaker, America Ferreira, and music from Daniel Powder. Remember, for what's happening in Hollywood and all your best buzzworthy entertainment stories, log on to our website, NBC6. .net. Well, good morning, everyone. The Heat just can't stay healthy these days. Shaquille O'Neal and Jason Williams both were held out of last night's game against the Bucks. Shaq hampered by a calf strain. Jay Will with foot inflammation. The shorthanded Heat at home trying to snap a three-game losing streak. No worries. Dwayne Wade had things under control. The drive and the jam and one 16 for Flash in the first quarter. Then great ball movement in the second quarter. Fast break. Alley oop to Wade. 23-point lead. More flash, the crossover, and the drive. He's going to throw it down in Brian Skinner's face. Out with the left hand. Six first half dunks. Then Wade showing off his passing. Spinning behind the back to Posey. Another easy two. 28 6 and 6 for Wade. Antoine Walker closes out the season best. 66 point first half. A triple. Miami led by as many as 33. They blow out the Bucks. 110 to 80. Jason Capono chipped in 15 points. Michael Doliak got in on the fun as well. His first double double of the season. 11 points and 11 boards. Hey, the Panthers looking for their third straight win last night in Pittsburgh. First pair scoreless in the 19th minute. Michael Ouellette capitalized on a two-on-one breakaway. Backhands it past Eddie Bell for one nothing pins. Second period, the Cats unable to stay out of the penalty box. Ryan Whitney makes them pay. A power play goal off the cross-ice pass. Penguins shut out Florida 3-zip. Now the Panthers outshot Pittsburgh 13-4 in the final period. Mark andre Fleury stopped all 32 shots for the Penguins. Barnum and Bailey left early this month, but the circus is back in South Florida. It's called Super Bowl Media Day. Ooh, is it something else. The Colts and Bears both meeting the press yesterday. Maybe while they're down there, the Dolphins can study this Indianapolis team. The Colts are the prime example of what the draft is all about. Take a look at this. Indy has seven first-round picks. They all were drafted, and they're all starting in the Super Bowl. Now, the Dolphins, in comparison, have two of their own first-rounders starting. Peyton Manning, Terry Glenn, Reggie Wayne, Dwight Freeney, just some of the headliners. And he also hit on Edger and James in the first round back in 97. Edge, of course, right now is with Arizona, but he's the all-time leading rusher for the Colts. They were always focused on getting the best player, and that's how we got Reggie Wayne. That's how we got Dallas Clark, and um, and, it, and it's been it's definitely all worked out for the good. I think as a whole, we we've been doing a good job of bringing in guys that want to play and want to play hungry, want to fly around on defense. So I think that that's part of the reason why we're here today. A lot of guys that are playing hungry and playing well on defense. And that will do it for morning sports. Have a great day, everybody. Noon on NBC6. It is 5.55, and here's a quick check of the morning's top stories. Can it be? The Cuban government releases what it claims is new video of Fidel Castro, showing him looking stronger, a little heavier, and talking again with Venezuelan leader Hugo Chavez. They're the first images of the Cuban leader in three months. This time, his jacket does not have the name F. Castro emblazoned on it. We'll have more coming up in a live report. A very sad story after a man return, returns home from work and accidentally runs down his son's playmate while pulling into his driveway. Ninth graders across our state will be choosing high school majors this fall, as mandated last year by the state legislature. Senator Barack Obama has introduced a bill to pull U.S. forces out of Iraq by the spring of 2008. In the meantime, a new audit shows tens of millions of dollars meant for Iraq reconstruction has been wasted. After a two-day jaunt in the Midwest, the president heads to Wall Street today to speak out about taxes and interest rates as part of his State of the Economy address. It's 556. We're working on a whole lot more for our next hour of news. And coming up at 6, how you can see the jungles of Africa without heading to the dark continent itself. We'll show you a new exhibit taking place at Metro Zoo. One Dolphins player is on the field for the Super Bowl, but Bonnie Holiday won't be suiting up. And remember, log on to NBC6.net slash Newsnet for updates, headlines, and web exclusives you won't see anywhere else. It's all right here from your one source for breaking news, weather, and sports on the web, NBC6.net. Hi, I'm Tony Segreto. NBC6's Spirit of South Florida campaign has proved to be a huge success. We're honoring individuals who truly make a difference in our community. Like Jack Nadell and Elise Blum, Tati, 
and Miss Alba. But we still need your help to honor more people from our community. So please visit NBC6.net slash Spirit of South Florida and send us your nominations. And watch Fridays at 6 on NBC6. Brought to you by Air Around the Clock. Committed to serving the South Florida community for over 30 years. From South Florida's news leader, this is NBC6 Today in South Florida. He's standing, he's drinking orange juice, and he appears stronger than ever. We're talking about Cuban dictator Fidel Castro. Good morning, I'm Tisha Lewis. New video coming up in a live report. Four people, including a deputy and a sheriff's wife, killed in what police are calling a targeted shooting. Some tough choices for high school students as they already have to start thinking about their future careers. Today, students must choose a tract of study, much like a college major, in order to graduate. Plus, she spent her life studying chimpanzees. Now you can see for yourself what the world of Jane Goodall is in Miami's Metro Zoo. This is Today in South Florida. It is a Wednesday morning, January the 31st, end of the month, 2007. Yeah, good morning, everybody. I'm Bob Mayer. I'm Pam Giganti. Thanks for joining us. Let's get you okay, right on over to meteorologist Ryan Phillips. <laughs> What? What, are you, what are you laughing at? Oh, actually, Chuckling. I was just talking to the director. We're talking about the, uh, what's it called, Robert, the bear in the big blue house.